Hi, I'm Lara Bennett, and you're listening to Highway Butterfly, the stories of Neil Cassell. Neil was a gifted singer, songwriter, musician, and friend to many. He released 14 albums as a solo artist and collaborated on countless projects with other musicians. After his passing in 2019, his friends and family created the Neil Casal Music Foundation to provide instruments and music lessons to students in New York and New Jersey and to support organizations that offer musicians mental health care. One of the featured projects of the newly formed foundation is the tribute album, Highway Butterfly, The Songs of Neil Casal, a sprawling 41 song collection bringing together a galaxy of rock and roots luminaries. We've asked the contributing musicians to share their memories of Neil and their stories of making the record. Highway Butterfly, The Songs of Neil Casal is out on November 12th. Pre-order the album and learn more about the Neil Casal Music Foundation at neilcasalmusicfoundation.org. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Hey, Lara. I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Great, thanks. Are you out on the road? Yes, I'm in the Denver area in Colorado. Awesome. I bet it feels good to be out there again. It feels really good. Yeah, the shows have been super fun and it's just good to connect with people in in person you know yeah absolutely well I know we're all glad to have live music again and feeling lucky yes so I'm gonna get right into it how did you first meet Neil Cassell I first met Neil in Ventura California and I was playing around some of the small bars and, and he came to see me and was super supportive I had um even texted with him you know like we should write but I was Admittedly, I never followed through because I, I was like nervous and like, you know, I've, I've been a fan of, of Neil's for many years and uh, I was totally like, oh, he wouldn't want to write with me, like, you know, so I, I, uh, I didn't ever take him up on that uh, writing together on that, but um, I followed his career for quite a long time. Wow. How did you get into his music? You know, it's funny, but Ryan Adams, and uh, as much as like, I, I'm not really a fan of this anymore, but um, he wrote really good songs. And uh, he was smart enough too to have Neil Cassell in his band and on those um, Cardinals records. And I literally went out of my way and was like, who is the guy playing guitar and singing harmony? You know, like who is this guy's a star and he's mm -hmm. just a jam of a talent. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we didn't get to, you know, hear you write together, but you did eventually end up working together. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, yeah. So that was really cool and that was a Kismet experience, I think, because we had someone else um, scheduled to be in the studio with us. Um, Shooter Jennings was at the helm producing and uh, we had, had someone else scheduled and just randomly the schedule conflicted. And at that point, uh, Shooter called me up and was like, hey man, you know, so-and-so can't make the, the session, but how do you feel about Neil Cassell? And I immediately was like, well, I mean, yeah, but would, can, First of all, can we afford him? Second of all, like, how is he not busy? And third of all, is he into this? You know, oh. so we, we got him and- uh, He was. Yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty much, um, you know, for me being such a big fan, it was it was like a dream come true to to work with him. That is so cool. So that, that was for your most recent album, Neon Cross, right? That's correct, yeah. Awesome. So what was it like working with him in the studio? You know, it was really funny because we had like um, our first day, we had like a an awkward run run in. And I was like, I was like, Shooter, is he like, does he like this stuff? Is he okay? And what we figured out was um, Neil was nervous and he was like, no reason to be nervous. Like, did not even, you couldn't tell he was nervous by playing. It was more like hanging out. And uh, he was so committed to do the right things that he was nervous. 
and which is crazy to me, right? Like everything he played was perfect and, and not so much like, it's weird. It's never about, you know, for me, the players with soul are, are the ones that I gravitate towards. And uh, everything he played was just super emotional and, and, and tasteful. And, um, you know, it was really fun to geek out on like guitar sounds with him. And he was just like, whatever you want. Oh my God, you know, and then we'd go back and forth and, and there was like a sound on, on one song where I was like, dude, I just want it to sound like so murky and weird. Like what if we get a baritone and we run it through like a tremolo and, and compress it and, um, and make it all distorted and stuff. And so he was down and, and uh, we, had, we had a lot of fun. We got to experiment and he was just really, really fun to work with. Did he ever impart any advice or musical wisdom that you really took to heart and keep with you? Um, gosh, you know, I don't know if it was advice so much as like he really understood what it what it is to be a singer songwriter and kind of the struggle um, to have your own project. And so, really, like you know, after recording, we'd spend some time talking outside, uh, and uh, it was just like compassion and understanding and that just made me feel um seen like he made me feel seen and heard and um you know he's very woke individual and uh and we just we just had some really wonderful conversations that i i took with me i i felt like i had you know a new friend and we'd texted after that recording experience just about music about bands we loved he was at like a texas gentleman show and he texted me and he was like dude i'm with the texas gentleman they say what's up and it's an amazing show and and i was just i was so excited to have connected with someone that you know i admire so greatly and that i collaborated with and i felt you know that was like the beginning of a really exciting musical relationship, you know, and that's, that's, that's why we do this thing and connecting with other musicians is, I really believe music is played together, right? And it's so exciting when you meet someone that you connect with and you, and you, you know, you have that, that musical chemistry with. Yeah, absolutely. Especially someone who, you know, you followed for a long time and look yeah. up to. Pretty magical. Yeah, it was kind of wild in that way. That is so cool. So you recorded Need Shelter from Neil's 2012 album, Sweet in the Distance. So let's take a quick listen to that song. Looking up at the pictures on his wall Gazing out of his window Hoping one of them might fall sometime I just can't forgive myself of anything I don't get around too much here anymore I used to fly every night Lately I've hit the wall, I'm so tired I just can't convince myself of anything at all I've been running wide way too long So if you take one chance on a two-time loser Never again will you be left alone Never again will you be left alone 
All mm-hmm. right. Now let's take a listen to Neil's version. on his wall Gazing out of his windows hoping one of them might fall Sometimes I just can't forgive myself anything I don't get around too much here anymore I used to fly myself of anything at all I don't need to hide but I do need shelter I've been running wide awake too long So if you take one chance on a two-time loser Never again will you be left alone Never again will you be left alone Okay, so a little insight from Gary about how Need Shelter was written. Um, Jamie, have you seen the movie Country Strong? Yeah, absolutely. So Neil is in that movie. Wait, really? What what part is he? (laughs) Yes, so here's here's the background. Um, In 2010, um, before filming started, the music supervisor, George Draculius, who Neil was friends with, hired him to um, give guitar lessons to Garrett Hedlund, who is um, Gwyneth Paltrow's co-star in the movie. And, you know, taught him how to like, act like a singer songwriter and play guitar. And so he continued um, giving lessons during filming. And um, he actually appears in the movie as part of Gwyneth Paltrow's band. He's a guitarist, of course. No um, <laughs> yeah, along with uh, Jim Lauderdale and Amanda Shires. Yeah. And it's definitely worth a rewatch um, just to see his face and yeah, his acting I skills. I actually really love that movie, by the way. Yeah. That's right. I do too. And I watched it recently and it was like kind of cathartic in a way. Oh, it makes um, me cry. That, that movie is just so emotional. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure, especially as a musician. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, during a break in filming, um, Neil took a trip to Clarksdale, Mississippi, which is like the home of the Delta Blues. And he spent time like going to shows and just like soaking up that part of the world. And he went to a music store and ended up buying a Gibson classical, classical guitar. Mm. And he just kind of was noodling. And that riff is what came out. So he called Gary and he said he'd never understood why people would want to play a nylon string guitar like a classical. But <laughs> yeah. that day he got it. And, you know, he went back to Nashville and finished the songs and the song. And it was one of his favorite songs that he ever wrote, which is yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. So that's that story. Um, why did you pick this song? I... I don't know, there was something emotional. I mean, clearly like that's the first indication or the first reason that I picked it. But then lyrically, you know, looking at it, um, I felt like there were really universal lyrics that kind of speak to the human condition. Just, you know, the lyrics specifically, I don't need to hide, but I do need shelter. It's just, it's so amazing to me. And I feel like everyone needs to hear that at, at times in their life. And it's weird because it, it could be like an absolute celebratory statement or really, you know, necessary, like listen, listen and cry scenario. I, I just felt like, I just felt like those lyrics were just so heartfelt and it, and it really did hit me in a way that I was like, you know, I would love to sing those lyrics. Yeah. Well, I love the little twist you put on it and it, 
it's just it sounds <laughs> it sounds so um you know it's a, it's just a really it's really it retains the spirit but it you know it has your own personal flair and um yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great tribute um so i'm I guessing was it a hard choice because you'd been a fan of his for a while yes yeah there were several that i i um i wanted to sing but actually when i asked for this song um i think it was the the second my second choice um because i just couldn't decide and i was sure that this song would have already been selected by someone else um but but it wasn't so i it, it felt perfect yeah and it was just released uh pretty recently as this a second single uh, or technically a third yeah and there's an awesome lyric video uh, with artwork by darren nay um can you tell me anything about the video well just that there's that the artist is brilliant the the fellow that that pieced it together and and um, i think i was really excited because again it's about the lyrics and the melody that Neil wrote. So it's really cool to me that it be displayed and that so that people could learn it and sing along. Yes. Yeah. I realized watching it that there were a lot of lyrics I had misheard. Previously. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That was, I think, I, that's why lyric videos I think are awesome. But this one is so artistic and vibey and cool mm -hmm. that it, it's kind of exciting. Um, but yeah, there's there's there were a couple lyrics I remember when I was learning the song that that I wasn't familiar with and that I was even more impressed, you know, like the yeah. craft of the song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, what was your experience like recording the song at Plyer Studio? That studio is incredible. It's so cool, and it was like it was like a big party with all Neil's friends and and a lot of his um, bandmates and collaborators. Uh, and 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 again, a room full of musicians that I've heard on records, and and idolized for years. Uh, you know, it was uh, it was really fun, and it was kind of exciting to create. And and Dave Schools, I think, what, yeah, Dave was like part of production and he said you know we were kind of deciding what kind of feel to go with or what kind of take to give it and and he was very much excited about an approach that i i brought to the table and um and then like it i mean they're so good the musicians are so good that it, it came together so quickly if anything it was like me nailing a a perfect vocal or what I thought would be suitable that maybe took like a second more than than the instrumental parts. They were just like right on it. The drummer, uh, Tony, and um, and and uh, he's and we had a few guitar players on that. And then and I forget who's singing, but it's just like I think that's Kyle. Um, Could have been Brian or Alex Coford. Oh, Alex. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, so they're, and they were all Neil's friends, you know? And it was like, it just felt like he would have been so stoked to see that. Definitely. You know, that it was like a celebration. Mm -hmm. And then we all just played his music and, and celebrated his life that way. It was really beautiful, honestly. Um, and cathartic. There were definitely times of, you know, talking about Neil and, and talking about what happened and sort of processing that too, because it was, uh, you know, as you can imagine, everybody was very heartbroken uh, mm -hmm. and shocked, you know? So it was honestly one of the most beautiful ways to celebrate a life that I've seen in a lot of years. And I'm, I'm of course I'm partial uh, mm -hmm. because I love Neil so much and because I'm a musician. But the way it was done was very, very tasteful. Yeah. So let's uh, shout out to those musicians. It was John Grayboff, Jeff Hill, Alex Coford, Tony Leone, Adam McDougall, yeah. Brian Whalen, and Jim Scott, obviously. Yeah. I think uh, yeah, yes. doing some horse collar, some interesting percussion, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and it was really cool. Um, uh, uh, Scott on keys. 
Um, Adam on keys. No, I'm sorry. I've got some, I'm in the elevation in Denver. And I, uh, <laughs> Adam McDougall. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'd seen him play with like the black crows and stuff. Like that was, that was really amazing. He's, he's an incredible player. And uh, it was such an honor. I just, again, it was super dreamy that, also, I don't know if there's images of the studio anywhere, but if you check it out, it's just, it's so cool. There's really cool lights everywhere and it's just such a fun vibe. It's a very creative room, you know? Rooms, uh, it's like a warehouse and it's tons of instruments everywhere. It's just like Disneyland for musicians. Yeah, it's definitely a magical place. For sure, for sure. So, can you tell me what the mission of the Neil Cassell Music Foundation means to you personally? Uh, you know, it, it means a lot. I've, over the years, I've lost a lot of friends to suicide and um, it's something that, you know, it's not gonna go away. I think mental health in the, in the music industry is just incredibly important. Um, you know, doing art for a living and, and artists have, been plagued for a long time with depression and and mental disorders and and um and afflicted with with suicidal ideation and whatnot you know and i honestly i'd be lying if that wasn't part of my life and um i've been in recovery i just celebrated four years clean and sober yesterday and Congrats. yeah thank you it's you know I, I just really understood, I just understood everything with Neil. Mm -hmm. And and I understand the feelings that he must have gone through. Like, dare I say that, you know, because who knows what he was thinking. But I just, I understand life, life and life as an artist. And to be that open to, to emotions and, and be that aware, right? Um, is hard it's hard to live in this world without a buffer right and i think to be an artist you you typically have that sensitivity to emotions and to people and to beauty and and we almost go deeper as artists right it, and that's perhaps why it's become such a an occupational hazard is that it's like we are in the thick of it and digging deeper to get to more sensitivity. We're, we actually, I think, become more sensitive on purpose, you know? I don't know, but these are again unfounded theories by uh, uh, not a psychologist here, but I have been around the block. And I have struggled with mental health, um, you know, depression and anxiety and, and drug addiction. That's just mm -hmm. part of the story. And, and I really, it's really important to me that people have some understanding of mental health and um, that there are more resources available for us and and that we can you know possibly save a life it it means it means so much to me this is like and this is what neil would have wanted you know yeah it's a really beautiful thing that's happening and yeah. actively transforming people's lives yes this podcast is brought to you by backline the music industry's mental health and wellness resource hub. Launched in 2019, Backline gives artists, crews, and their families quick and easy access to mental health and wellness resources. Backline provides individuals with case management and offers virtual support groups as well as yoga, meditation, and breath work. To donate, learn more, or get in touch for personalized care, visit backline.care. That's B-A-C-K-L-I-N-E dot C-A-R-E. So on that note, you know, you've, you're on the road right now and you've been through so much and you've been, you know, doing it for a long time. Do you have any tips to share with young musicians who may need some help maintaining your mental health while you're on the road? Mm, yeah, that's a good, that's a really good question. And, you know, that's sort of a, um, it does require some maintenance. That's all I can say. And and you might not know that until you're in this in the struggle. Mm -hmm. um, there are resources. There's if you 
all I would say for people out there on the road and, and struggling um, or struggling in the business alone, because the, you know, the nature of the music business is highly competitive. It's also um, <laughs> highly unreliable. It's, it's very much a struggle. And all I would say is that, um, you know, we go to the doctor for physical ailments and, and for checkups and it should be no different for mental health. So I don't think that there's any reason for any stigma. And honestly, being, you know, having um, therapy on a regular basis and like having support and, and people that, you know, um, I've utilized 12 step for a number of years and therefore I make meetings on the road. And therefore I have a network of people that, that support me and that I utilize. And, um, you know, I think it's a little more convoluted if you don't actually have an addiction issue, but if you do have any tendency towards, uh, you know, depression and anxiety or any other dis mood disorders, which are so common today, there's no shame. There's no shame because honestly, we live in a world that is, that is quite unnatural now. I think the tech industry has developed much faster than, than human emotions could possibly keep up with. And uh, there's really no shame, and there's also a lot of resources. There's I I work with a therapist online, on mm -hmm. and um, you know I re highly recommend you know somatic and trauma therapy. I highly recommend um, self help books, and I recommend some sort of spirituality, whatever that is, yoga, um, surfing, like <laughs> like Neil. You know, he was a super spiritual dude, and and nature, and and also like telling, like find someone. If it's not, if they're not with you, find someone that you can talk to, um, because uh, it's just nearly impossible. That almost, almost everyone has some sort of mental health concern at some point in their life, or it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like going to a doctor, and the results are great. It improves the art. It really does improve the art. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's great advice, Jamie. <laughs> that was so long -winded, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted. <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah, totally. I, uh, again, I'm not a, I'm not a therapist, but I, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing those insights and all of your memories and stories about Neil and making this record. Really appreciate it. I'll say, and to let this, let you go though, I just got to say that. Neil gave me his, um, he gave me about six of his guitar straps that I, I use. Um, I use one of his guitar straps every day. Uh, oh, wow. That's and, awesome. Yeah. And it's so cool. Um, I just, I'm so excited about this album and, um, and about the cause and uh, just getting to celebrate his music is, is such an honor. So thank you. Yes. Thank you for being a part of it. Awesome. Take care. You too. Thanks for listening to Highway Butterfly, the stories of Neil Casal. Tune in next week to hear more from the artists who made this tribute album a reality. Highway Butterfly, the songs of Neil Casal is out on November 12th. All album net proceeds go to the Neil Casal Music Foundation. You can pre-order the album and learn more at neilcasalmusicfoundation.org.